Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. So I recently made another Flappy Bird clone, but unlike thousands of others, this one is a text-based game that runs in the Windows console. For those few who don't know, Flappy Bird is a very simple game, in which you navigate a little bird, trying to safely pass through the gaps in the vertical walls, and fly as far as possible. To see how I made this game, keep watching. As usual, I started working on a new game by opening my game template in the Notepad++ editor. This template includes my game framework called Terminator, which provides a number of features for rapid developing terminal-based games in the Windows console. And when I say a number of features, I mean these few functions and constants that define the colors of the terminal. The next thing in the template is the game class definition. This class currently has only one function that actually represents the main game loop. And the loop is currently just displaying some nonsense text on the screen. The template ends with the main program, which creates a new console window and runs the main game loop. To build the game, I used the minimalist GNU for Windows development environment, and ran the GCC compiler at the command prompt. Since we got a silly message displayed on the screen, we can confirm that the template is error-free, and continue with programming our game. So instead of displaying this annoying message, I created the sky by clearing the entire screen with blue spaces. After that, I organized the main loop better by implementing the game state machine, and added the render function which currently only draws the ground. To make the ground more visually attractive, I put rocks on the ground. Here the rocks are actually a string, made up of rock-like characters separated by spaces. In order to make this game look like an endless runner, the background has to be scrolled, according to the distance traveled by the bird. So I defined a new variable for the distance traveled, and increment its value in each cycle. Now I could use this variable to wrap the rocks along the horizontal axis, creating the illusion of an endless scrolling background. The next goal was to implement the barrier class. This class creates a barrier at the given position. The barrier is composed of two vertical walls, separated by a gap. The draw function obviously draws the barrier. To make a group of barriers, I used a list container, then added three barriers to the list, and finally drew them all. In the next step, I defined the spacing between the barriers, and created them on random vertical positions. Then I implemented a mechanism to move the barriers to the left. But there was a problem. The barriers disappear forever once they reach the left edge of the screen. So I added a logic that checks if the front barrier is outside the screen. In that case, the front barrier will be pushed to the last position in the list, and it will be respawned on the rightmost position on the screen. So the mechanics of moving barriers now work perfectly fine. Now it was time to implement the bird class. This class resets the bird, and draws it dead or alive. So after creating a new instance of the bird and drawing it, we finally got our little hero displayed on the screen. But it was looking pretty weird. Not only because its body is built from ASCII characters, but it also flies without flapping its wings. So I had to add the wings to the bird's body and animate them. Now the bird was looking less weird. It flaps its wings while flying, but gravity still does not act on it. So I defined the bird's vertical impulse and the gravity, and used them to calculate the vertical velocity of the bird. Currently the bird is falling down, because only gravity is acting on it. In order to fly, the bird needs to get an impulse. This brings us to the player control. So there is only one key that gives the bird a flying impulse, and that's the up arrow key. Oh fantastic, the bird is flying now. Now it was time to implement collision detection between the bird and the barriers. So I added a function that finds the intersection area of the bird and a barrier, and then checks this area to see if it contains at least two overlapping symbols. Hmm. Now we can define the game over conditions, which are if the bird hits a wall, or flies too low or too high. Let's check it out. Oh nice, the bird is killed after collision with a barrier, and the game is over. Let's try to fly through the gap now. Fantastic. No collision detected when flying through the gap. Let's check what happens if the bird flies too low or too high. Nice. Perfect. The bird was killed in all cases when it should have been killed. Now I wanted to improve the final scene by giving the bird one last impulse before it dies and showing the game over dialogue. Hmm. 
To make the game even more visually attractive, I also added clouds drawn by using at symbols. So there is a list container which contains three clouds, and moves to the left just like the list of barriers. Then I added a scoring system, where the score is represented by the travel distance. The score and the highest score are displayed at the top of the screen. To make the game even more enjoyable, I added the sounds of flapping wings, passing through a hole, and hitting a wall. Oh boy, what amazing sounds! In the last step, I added a splash screen to show brief instructions before starting the game. I also upgraded the game over dialogue with the option to return to the main screen on pressing the backspace key. Let's play the game now. So at this point, the game is completed and fully playable. I hope you enjoyed this video, in which we saw how to make the Flappy Bird game using only ASCII characters. If you have any feedback or suggestions, please let me know by leaving a comment below. And if you find today's video interesting, please like it and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video. Bye.